Today is 19th August. That means it is World Photography Day. And I wondered that how photography is so present in everybody's world. Whether you share the images to WhatsApp, Instagram, whether you see through media, advertising, or even if you make FaceTime or Zoom calls. But have you ever wondered that the, where the whole photography journey started? And the fact is, it is not even a 200 years old. So, where this whole thing started, I'm gonna share it with you. So let's see what the photography word is. So what photography is painting with light. And this word is first coined by Sir John Herschel in 1839. So see, it is not even a 200 years old. Photography is a Greek word that comes from force, that means light, and the graphe means drawing. So it is light drawing. And photography is a combination of two distinct sciences. The first one is optics, where you bend the light through the lenses, reflect the light through mirrors. And the second one is a chemistry, where you put the chemicals on a plastic paper or a glass, where you can actually record the image. Well, we have seen this image on the inter internet. So, and suggesting that this is the first camera. But obviously everyone said that if this is the first camera, then who took this picture? So obviously this is not the first camera. So which one is the first camera? So we'll have to go two, three centuries in history to see where this camera comes from. So Latin artist used to use a camera called camera obscura. So what the camera obscura is, it is just a pinhole camera. So camera obscura in Latin actually means a dark room. And see this image and I will explain you how the camera obscura works or a pinhole camera works. So imagine you have a tree in front of you which is a well lit and you have a box with a small hole in front of it. So now what will happen is the light will get reflected through the pin like through the hole and it will be projected on the other side on a black side or a, or a curtain or anything. So in this image, you can actually see the tree is getting reflected in through the through the hole and it has been projected on a wall and the artist is actually tracing it. So what camera obscura didn't had was it was not able to record it permanently because people were drawing or tracing it, but they were not able to record it. So how this chemistry played a vital part in recording the image on a glass or on a plastic paper. Around 1800, a person called Thomas Wedgo Wood uh, produced a black and white negative on a paper with a silver nitrate chemical. So the chemical was known for getting dark when it, it is exposed to the light. So he did some experiment with that, but the problem was he managed to produce an image, but he was not able to fix the image on a paper because every time he used to see the image in a light, it used to get darker. 16 years later, in 1816, a Frenchman called Nizofa Nemse attempted the same thing. But however, like a wet wood, he was not able to fix the image permanently on the paper. So he, he started experimenting with the chemicals and in 1822, he actually got succeeded with a technique called heliography. So heliography means a sun drawing. And in 1862, he actually succeeded to print, actu uh, print the actual photograph and fixing it on a paper. So this is the image and everyone, almost everyone in the photography industry knows this is the first image captured through a camera on a paper. But do you remember what was the time of exposure for this image? It was eight hours. The paper was exposed to eight hours to create this image. So after a few years, Nimse and another French person called Louis Daguerre partnered together to improve this heliography process. After Nimse died in 1833, Louis Daguerre came up with his own developed chemical or a process which allowed photographers to get the exposure in several minutes rather than keeping it for several hours like heliography process 
for which the French government awarded him a lifetime salary and because of which only the 19th August is known as a World Photography Day. Around 1835, an Englishman called William Talbot produced a process which allowed people to, to reprint or recreate the negative afterwards. So in 1841, the prototype of that method came into the world and that whole technique is still available until the digital photography came. So obviously with all these innovations and, and scientific discoveries, obviously there was a lot of criticism with the artist because they thought they would lose a job because obviously now you are getting a physical image rather than a painting. Some famous artists actually created some hilarious jokes or hilarious paintings saying that photography is not worth like paintings. The first commercial camera was introduced by Kodak in 1888 and it used to take 100 images or 100 exposures and to get them printed you had to send the whole camera to the Kodak to get, them, get it developed or print. In 1925, the Leica, the German company, introduced their first camera, Leica 1. Actually, it got delayed because of the World War. So it was the first camera which had the 35mm film which we all know today. The twin lens reflex cameras were in the industry for a while. But in 1928, the Roliflex introduced their TLR with a 120mm which is also called as a medium format film camera. In 1933, the SLR design revolution began. The first SLR camera was a German camera, Ihagi, but they were west level viewfinders, uh, not like a traditional uh, eye level viewfinders as we know today. Post World War II, Contax introduced their Contax S camera which had a pentaprism which allowed cameras to have an eye level viewfinder which all we know today. So this was all about how the photography started in early 1800 to almost 2003 or 4 where the films were existed. But what happened afterwards? How this digital evolution, digital photography started? I will share with you in the next video. If you like this video, please do like share and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more content.